Must Stop MS on Twitter posted this incredible graphic showing the rise of prices of multiple sclerosis drugs. You're looking at the price per year in 2023. It started off around $10,000 per year when beta serine was FDA approved in 1993, which is reasonable considering these are drugs which modify a potentially disabling disease and there were no treatments that were FDA approved at the time. However, you can see the rise in inflation in the dotted line, the rise in the prices of these drugs greatly exceeds that, rising exponentially to over $100,000 per year in many cases, despite the fact that many of these drugs are off patent and they have generic or biosimilar drugs competing with them, but it doesn't seem to matter. The price still goes up. Also, the prices mirror each other very closely, even though these are completely different drugs with different mechanisms of actions different efficacy and side effects, and different costs to produce, some being simple small molecules and others being complicated biologics. It'd be nice if you could invest in multiple sclerosis drugs. I looked up the return of Avonex, a once weekly injection that may be the least effective disease modifying therapy and calculated the return since 1996 when it was FDA approved and it's 9.17% annualize, this is much better than almost all other securities. I calculated returns since 2015, roughly in the last 10 years, and it beat almost everything except things like Bitcoin and US stocks, though good luck selling 20-year-old Avonex out of your freezer. But when I look at this chart, I notice something different. The prices are a bit arbitrary and funky to me. For instance, beta serine and Extavia, both off patent, are actually the same formulation. They were once made in the same factory. I don't know if that's true any longer. No difference in trade secrets or in active ingredients to my knowledge, yet the difference in price is more than $26,000 per year. Keep in mind, prices can actually vary for different health insurance companies and countries. For example, this is a US-based graphic. What about glutirimer acetate? The formulations Copaxone and Glatopa are very similar, but the price difference is roughly fourfold. Is Copaxone actually superior? What about Gelenia, a simple small molecule, a once daily pill for MS? It's generic. There are several manufacturers, some well-established pharmaceutical companies, but the difference in price is $3,900 per year versus $127,000 per year, an enormous difference, but are the generics actually just as good? What about Fumeric esters. Well, most are still on patent, but Tecfidera is generic. It has generic dimethyl fumarate, multiple manufacturers. It's a simple small molecule. The price difference is $2,700 a year versus $109,000 a year. But again, are the generics really equivalent? And Abagio and Tysabri also have generics and biosimilars respectively available. Let's take a look at some of these individual agents. We'll start with glutirimer acetate, copaxone versus glatopa. This isn't really one drug, but more like a thousand drugs. They took amino acids common in myelin basic proteins and randomized them to form thousands of different proteins. The idea is that it works like an allergy shot. Your immune system sees these residues and develops tolerance and hopefully doesn't attack your own myelin. This study analyzed the composition of amino acids and they were similar between the two formulations. Alanine, lysine, glutamine, and tyrosine were in the same proportions. They did various other chemical and biological assays, and these formulations seem to be very similar. This is a retrospective efficacy study comparing Copaxone, which was the original FDA-approved drug, versus Clotopa, which is the copycat drug, and they tried to match the individuals with MS for their baseline characteristics, like their age, their rate of recent relapses. There were 357 on Glatopa and 2,000 1,291 on Copaxone. And the annualized relapse rate, relapses per person per year, was 0.12 much lower with Glatopa compared to 
0.3 with copaxone. Now, of course, it's unlikely that glatopa would be better than copaxone. They're supposed to be the same thing. And the authors speculate that there were actually more prescriptions filled in people getting glatopa, possibly because it was less expensive, less copays, and so there was better compliance with the treatment. Next, we move to Gelenia, a pill for MS. It's a simple, small molecule shown here. You'd think it would be easy and inexpensive for generic manufacturers to produce. One test for the validity of a generic is bioavailability. You take the pill and we test how much of the drug fingolimod is in your blood compared to the branded formulation. In this study, they compared Gelenia, which is treatment three, the squares versus two trials of generic fingolimod, and the levels of fingolimod in the blood were approximately the same well within acceptable air limits. Here is an observational study with generic fingolimod and people with MS. This is actually a different generic fingolimod than the data I just showed you. They had a 2.5 year average follow-up and the annualized relapse rate, relapses per person per year, went down from one per year to 0.2 per year so a roughly 80% reduction, and disability as measured by EDSS or the Expanded Disability Status Scale went down from 2.3 on average to 2.1. There were side effects such as slow heart rate and elevation of liver enzymes, though at similar rates to the branded product, and overall the efficacy looked similar to what's seen in observational studies with branded Gelenia. However, this observational study had a different take. They looked at 27 people switching from brand name Gelenia to generic fingolimod, and they did badly. Four had relapses, three had elevation of liver function test, one had elevated amylase, which could indicate pancreatitis, and 12 out of 27 had an increase in disability as measured by EDSS. This is not only bad, but probably much, much worse than would be expected for people taking no medication. Why did these two studies have different outcomes? Your guess is as good as mine. I'll also share that I have one patient who switched from branded Gelenia to generic fingolimod who actually had a rash, an allergy, possibly due to one of the inactive ingredients. So these things can happen. However, none of my other patients had any other problems, certainly not unexpected relapses or worsening of disability. And of course, we do check T cell panels for people taking these drugs and they're expected to be very low, and they were, the CD4 positive T cell count was in fact very low on all of my patients taking generic fingolimod, so I'm not exactly sure what happened here. And by the way, my name is Brandon Bieber, I make videos about MS every Wednesday, and I have no financial relationship with any of these pharmaceutical companies. Next we move to Tecfidera, this is dimethylfumarate, and it's a simple small molecule shown here. You can see fumarate is actually an intermediary of the Krebs cycle present in every cell in your body with just two carbon atoms or methyl groups added to it, you'd think it would be simple and easy to manufacture. This is a pharmacodynamic study comparing monomethylfumarate, which is actually the active intermediary of this drug, comparing Nurax Farms dimethyl generic dimethylfumarate, which is treatment A on the left-hand side, versus branded Tecfidera treatment B on the right-hand side. And they looked at various parameters such as Tmax, the time it takes the drug to reach its maximum concentration or area under the curve, total exposure to the drug over time, and they're roughly the same. This is an observational study on one formulation of generic dimethylfumarate. They had 142 participants with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. After one year, only 17.6% had MRI activity, disability was stable on average, and 90.8% were free of relapses, similar to observational studies with branded Tecfidera. Now, if you go to Biogen's website, Biogen is the manufacturer of branded Tecfidera, they don't want you to switch to generic. In in fact, they want you to switch to this other drug, Vumerity, which is a different fumaric ester, which doesn't have a generic equivalent and actually may have a lower rate of gastrointestinal side effects in some people. And they say you should go to your healthcare provider and ask them to write dispense as written on the prescription so the pharmacy will give you branded Tecfidera. I don't know if your insurance would actually pay for this. Next, we move to Tysabri. This is a once a month infusion given for multiple sclerosis. And and this is not a simple small molecule. This is a complicated biological drug. And so there aren't 10 different manufacturers making a generic because it's a complicated 
drug it's hard to make. And so this company actually did a randomized trial to try to prove that their drug is equivalent. So they studied Tysabri, the original FDA approved drug versus Tyruco, the copycat drug, and they looked at the mean cumulative number of new lesions on MRI, and it was roughly the same between Tysabri and Tyruco. So these drugs do seem to be equivalent and interchangeable. However, there are differences in inactive ingredients between the two formulations highlighted in red on this slide. So it's possible you could be allergic to one formulation, though not the other. However, most allergic reactions are going to be to the drug itself, natalizumab. The last thing I'll mention is a single case report on generic Abagio. This is a once a day pill for MS. A woman switched from brand name Abagio to generic teraflunamide and shortly after developed a significant spinal cord exacerbation. In other words, worsening symptoms due to damage to the spinal cord. Later testing revealed that the generic teraflunamide pill had only 55% of the labeled amount. This drug is usually given 14 milligrams once daily. Now this isn't quite as egregious as it might seem as there is a seven milligram formulation of Abagio, which was almost as effective in clinical trials, but most would agree you want to get the amount of the drug you were actually prescribed, not something less. Now the generic pharmaceutical company isn't saving any money by short changing the patient. This is a simple small molecule. I presume this was more of a technical error, but again, this is unacceptable. And I'll end with this. When I post things like this on social media, it typically receives a very negative response. Most people are highly skeptical of generic and biosimilar drugs, but I have a different opinion. My experience is mostly positive, and I really haven't had major problems with these types of drugs, and I think they're mostly good and ultimately will make multiple sclerosis drugs less expensive and more available to people with MS, though certainly there are pitfalls, as I've shown here, and some amount of testing and regulation is necessary because I'm not going to test those generic teraflunamide tablets. That's not within my scope of practice. I'd be interested to know your experiences. Have you ever taken a generic or biosimilar drug? Do you think it had equal side effects and efficacy? And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.